Have you heard? Have you heard the newest and best Bahamian resource for test preparation for BJCs and BGCSEs? Check us out on Facebook or at anansibahamas.com. Again, check us out on Facebook or at www.anansibahamas.com. Where Mr. Ferguson is the CEO, there are a lot of resources, especially for Bahamian students. Anansi Learning Technologies. Check us out. Welcome to the New Chemist Podcast. We're glad you're listening. Feel free to download this podcast on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Here on The New Chemist, we discuss chemistry, which simply put is a science of change, as well as careers, community research, and COVID-19. We're happy you're tuning in. My guest today is Dev Mandavio. Thanks for joining me today. It is so good to hear from you. Just briefly, I'll inform my audience about you. Dev Mandavio graduated Georgia Tech with a Bachelor's of Science with highest honor. His activities and societies included uh, Alpha, Eta, Mu, Beta, Kappa, Sigma Fraternity. He studied abroad at the University of Oxford. He was a part of BMES. He also received several recognitions and awards. The Invention Prize, first place twi- twice. He also received the People's Choice Awards with the team that he worked with. The ACC Invention Prize, he was a finalist. Twice received the People's Choice Awards. He was also part of CreateX Startup Launch Accelerator three times. He was a National Events Hall of Fame CIC finalist, NBIB Venture Well debut, challenge third place. He received faculty's honors, Dean's List, and he was a recipient of the Zell and Hope uh, Scholarship. Some of his leadership responsibilities included student body vice president for campus services, SGA. EVP for Stamps Health Ambassadors and VP of Finance for GT Bravo Club. He has been very successful. He has served as a research assistant at Duke University Pratt School of Engineering. Um, he has also served as student body VP, as I said, and he has served as a research lead um, for Mobile Enzyme Absorbing Particles Group. He has served as the founder and CEO of Alfred Technologies. Uh, he has also served as the Conversion Science Fellow, as a business advisor and consultant for Oxos Medical, uh, co-founder, executive chairman, and then CEO at Ethos Medical. And currently he serves as the head of enterprise architecture and growth at Oxos Medical. Dev enjoys working in a multidisciplinary team adopt the user-centered approach to solve real problems. He enjoys engaging in K-12 STEM outreach programs, traveling, skiing, golfing, and exploring eateries in his free time. That was a good colleague and friend of mine. It's definitely a pleasure and an honor to have such a talented and intelligent young man on this podcast. Well, Dev, thanks so much for joining me today. It's so good to have you on as a guest. Wow, me and Dev, we go way back to Georgia Tech, uh, to uh, BMAT 3100. I mean, it's so good to see you, man. How have you been? How have you been? Things have been great, man. Um, yeah, it's really exciting. It, it feels like just yesterday we were at, <laughs> um, you know, lecture. But uh, I'm glad to see all the things that you've been up to. Um, and I'm super excited to be here. Yeah, dude. So what have been your longstanding interest in the field of science? Oh, that's a good question. Um, <clears throat> Cause I've seen you, if you've done a lot, you have done a lot in your career thus far, even though you I mean you guys. Oh, no, the, yeah. you're, you're too kind. Yeah. Um, I, I think the things that interest me the most are, um, you know, working with really uh, intelligent, driven people um, and us collectively working towards uh, trying to make a difference as cliche as it sounds, you know, a lot of, um, I think the, the reason that I gravitated towards the healthcare field or like medical devices, um, you know, more broadly science was because it was more tangible to see the kind of impact that you could have. Right. Okay. Um, so, you know, with 
the devices that you know we're making now or um, with the services that we provide, it's it's very easy to directly see the impact it has to patients, to doctors, to people that are providing care, um, which is exciting and and uh, you know very encouraging. Okay, yeah, that's good. That's good. So um, I'm breaking the unfos just a bit. Um, you said you see tangible impact. What do you mean by that? Uh, sure. So. <clears throat> Not that there's anything wrong with, you know, pursuing a career in a different industry, but me personally, you know, if I were to uh, start a company that was in, you know, the social media space or, you know, another project management tool or, you know, fintech or this, that and the other, um, you know, all of this provides services and they provide value to people. But um, when we look particularly in like the medical device or healthcare space, um, you know, it's very easy to see that, okay, if I make this one thing, this could improve patient outcomes by X because of a problem that we've identified oh, okay. or that this service is going to, you know, uh, in the context of what I'm working on now, I'm trying to increase access to care and um, providing more equitable care uh, to, you know, majority of the world that currently lacks access to it. So that's uh, something that, you know, encourages me. And it's what I think of when I get out of bed and go to sleep every day. And that's, um, I think, why it's, at least easier for me to gravitate towards something like that. Yeah, it sounds, really, it sounds like you're really passionate about it. So given all uh, the things you're doing in your career, um, how do you maintain view of the bigger picture? Like, How do you see the forest for the trees? How do you keep perspective in your workplace and also in your personal life? Uh, I mean, the, the short answer is I don't do a great job of it. Um, okay, that's fair. It's, that's fair. it's something that I'm continuously, you know, trying to be better at. Um, I, I think it's very easy, especially... Um, when you're passionate about something to kind of get lost into it. I know, right? Um, so, I mean, you know, it, it feels like just yesterday that uh, we were at tech and it's yeah. it, like, I truly feel that because, um, you know, I've been working so long and so hard at, uh, at what we've been up to, you know, okay. and it's something that I'm super passionate about, but it also, um, you know, it, you do lose the forest for the trees. It is sometimes okay. uh, hard to keep track of, you know, uh, the bigger picture or the 10 year, 15 year plan. Not that, you know, I'm, I'm a proponent of those kinds of things. I, I'm, okay. you know, a little more laid back and like to see where life takes me okay. and, um, you know, just make sure that I wake up every day, um, look in the mirror and am excited to do what I'm about to do that day. Um, and that's kind of how I, I, uh, Which nice. I guess proceed right now. Yeah. Okay. That's good. That's good, man. So, um, how have you been adapted and creative in the field of science? Can you discuss any of your projects that you're working on or that you've worked on? Um, how have you been adapted? How have you idea flair? Because you've worked in the biomedical engineering space um, and you also work in you work in the science space primarily. Um, so what I see, uh, you worked as a convergent science fellow. You worked as a founder and CEO of Alpha and Technologies, a variety of other things. Um, so where have you added your flair? So um, I think the biomedical engineering degree um, from Georgia Tech is is great because it is kind of a blend of a lot of different disciplines together. Yeah. Um, so you have more of a holistic understanding um, and you also have maybe more of an entrepreneurial background, at least based on you know the program that Georgia Tech kind of uh, encourages. Yeah. So uh, in terms of you know, how I've added, let's say, my flair. Oh, what's um, been, of, what has been uh, piqued your curiosity as you've worked in the field? What project particularly has piqued your curiosity? Uh, where I'm at now is honestly probably the most um, excited I've been, uh, okay. I think, throughout my career. Uh, Oxus Medical, we're, uh, you know, trying to enable anyone anywhere to access uh, diagnostic care um, mm -hmm. right where they need it, uh, exactly when they need it. So, you know, we want to bring radiologic imaging safely to the point of care, uh, especially for the majority of the world that currently lacks access to, um, you know, diagnostic imaging as a whole, but also any subsequent qu uh, care that's associated with it. And um, that's, I think, the, the mission that we have that excites me. I think in terms of um, what about it that I enjoy is the multidisciplinary aspect of it um, okay. that okay. I think the BME degree lends itself to. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't do much of the technical work anymore, even though I, I have in the past, 
And I think the technical background is is great to have because um, it becomes very difficult to manage a, a pretty complex um, project, especially a pretty uh, you know heavy R and D engineering project without having some level of understanding. Uh, but at the same time, I think the business acumen and um, I think the healthcare background, or at least the knowledge of you know the healthcare system as a whole with payers and you know providers and such um is very beneficial uh for crafting you know what is our go to markets what is our long term strategy how is okay. it that we're actually going to achieve this mission that we've you know set out uh to go and accomplish okay. um how do we get the funding the resources the you know yeah, correct yeah, yeah. staff i agree i agree that's good actually go and do that so that's that's i think where um i've been interested okay good so along the same lines um what uh how long is it for the project that you've worked on has it been a long time for them to go to the market or are you still in the process right now or have some gone to the market already yeah so um <clears throat> the first version of our product uh was more a limited market release we got fda clearance for it last year yeah. and um it was a way to gauge um product market fits market demand and get feedback on uh, what would eventually lead to our commercial scale version, which we're expecting to have FDA clearance for later this year, mm-hmm. um, and and you know enter the U.S. market and then you know closely after the international market would. So we're, I would say, in terms of the life cycle of kind of a, a startup company, still in the early stage, um, still really exciting, still you know uh, the point where everyone's wearing a lot of different hats uh, and mm-hmm. things are changing pretty quickly. Yeah, so it sounds like is this a startup? If I may, is it a startup? Or would you? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Okay, good, good, good. So, how have you sought or found the right environment for you to thrive intellectually and scientifically? So, how did you find this uh, Oxford Medical? How did you find these various places you worked at? What uh, what process did you go through in your mind or in your life or to find these places? How do you think through your decisions? Uh, it honestly kind of happened by chance, you know. I, okay, I think, by chance. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, what is the um, adage that you know, opportunity or luck is you know just when uh, opportunity meets preparation or whatever it is. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard them before. But while I was working on my last startup, um, Ethos Medical, mm-hmm. one of our board directors is a was a board director of this company as well. Um, so uh, there was the introduction made there. Uh, to the CEO of Access Medical, mm-hmm. and we came, you know, it, very close mentor-mentor relationship, and then became fast friends. And we'd been in touch for you know the last three, four years um, throughout you know the very early stages of Access. And I think after we had raised a, a funding round at this medical, it made sense to um, make the jump over, because I think there was something that uh, there was a need that I felt that I could fill. Um, and there was a you know a, a large enough and ambitious ambitious enough problem that uh, Oxus had set out to actually go and pursue mm-hmm. that uh, got me excited to you know make the jump. Uh, that's good. That's good. That's very good. Um, so yeah. Um, so how do you maintain a balanced life given all your responsibilities and accomplishments? Would you say you're balanced, Dev, or do you have your priorities in check? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I mean, oh my goodness! Yeah, you know, funny. you know, it's Georgia Tech guys. Um, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, I, I take time to, um, you know, do the things that let me kind of de-stress or you know give me time away. Some people, you know, meditate. I, I play golf. I play golf poorly, my dad. Um, I'm still learning, hey. but it's a it's a hobby of mine that I've picked up that I found uh, um, really relaxing and something that I think just you know takes me away from the work environment. Yeah, but, and I've heard you know, golf that's... is a good networking tool too, you know? Oh yeah, I mean, um, <laughs> <laughs> we, we have plenty of our investors and, uh, you know, C-suite yeah, stuff yeah. That's, uh, that are into golf. So yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, been, it's been a really fun uh, hobby and I think it's it's gained a lot of popularity as of late as well. Okay, good, 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 good. So what, if you had to break down your success thus far, um, how would you say you've been successful as a student from point A to point B from Georgia Tech to where you are now? What would you say has complement you being successful? Has it been your work ethic? Has it been the, the time you spend on your work? Has it been the networking that you have, the mentors that you made, uh, that you found? 
has it been these different like have been the projects that you worked on along the way what has complemented your success tremendously oh boy um i mean it's all the things you said but i think you know um I think, you know, the work ethic, the amount of work that I do, the, you know, um, all the cliche things are more of a downstream effect of being passionate about what it is that you want to do. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if there's something that you truly believe in, if there's something that truly gets you out of bed um, or that you think about, you know, before you go to sleep every night, that's going to, um, th that will be the driving factor in you putting in the work, in you going outside of the scope of, you know, what is required. Mm -hmm. um doing you know beyond what is necessary to you know uh, however we're defining quote unquote success right so <clears throat> i think that you know first and foremost has been what has allowed me to um do what i've done uh, at least so far in the healthcare and the the medical space and um i think through that uh i've been able to meet some pretty incredible people that i've had you know, a very uh, long lasting impact on, on my career. Um, you know, mm. th that board director um, at the company I had founded, who is also a board director here, who made that introduction initially, you know, that was, you know, a big step. And he was actually one of the uh, people that back in Georgia Tech encouraged me to, um, you know, look down the path of entrepreneurship, given that He's a professor at Georgia Tech in the biomedical engineering department, Dr. James Stubbs, who's, you know, just a phenomenal human. Um, and he'd been there, done that, started and sold a bunch of companies um, and was one of the reasons that, you know, um, like yourself, I was pre-med as well uh, mm -hmm. and decided that in sort of med school, I, I felt that at least personally, I could have a larger impact if I made the tools, the services and devices that healthcare providers um you know, used to provide care to patients as opposed to being one of the providers themselves. Yeah, dude, and you have to find your niche. I completely agree with that. You know, not, um, and I say this, this is my personal opinion. I don't believe everyone is called to be a doctor. Uh, everyone has the passion to do so. And I think you can make an effective, you can make effective change in different spaces and the change can still be as long lasting or it may not translate as quickly in the, like in the clinical arena, but the change can still be long lasting. Um, so yeah, and also the thing you talked about, about Professor Georgia Tech, dude, if I could, we could have another episode <laughs> just about the professors I've met at Georgia Tech, whether they be, be people who look like me, who don't look like me, it's just the genuine care, concern, and technical acumen of those professors, especially when it came to not just the classroom, but also your next steps. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. That that's something that's indelible in my mind. So, how do you maintain vision and teamwork in your environment? Sorry, could you repeat that? How do you maintain vision and teamwork in your environment? So, um, especially in the startup environment where things change so quickly, that that is that can be difficult, right? right. That is something that we are still trying to get better at. Um, I think in terms of vision. You know, that's something that we we reiterate every time we have like an all hands. We put the development um, of the next product in the context of the vision. We make sure that people actually truly buy in um, when we're recruiting and, and going through interviews. Um, it, it is uh, just that important for everyone in the company to have buy in, for everyone to believe that, you know, what we're doing is important. Because as I mentioned earlier, you know, that passion is really what is going to drive the work ethic. That passion is going to be what is, you know, going to produce a caliber of work that just can't be replicated. Um, so we put the vision first and foremost. In terms of teamwork, um, that that is more of something that we try to address through a cultural fit. So okay. we look for people that are, you know, humble, that are willing to be proven wrong um, and can take criticism constructively. A, a lot of the things that require you to forego your ego so that you can collaborate with other people who yeah. often have maybe um, a different set of either objectives or key results that sometimes can conflict and parties need to be able to negotiate with one another. Um, and. And, and it becomes easier when you frame everything in the context of that vision. If everyone's steering in the same direction, um, that teamwork aspect becomes much simpler. Uh, you can put things in the context of the vision as opposed to in the context of what individuals believe is right or true. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think, so I think they go hand in hand. 
Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I like what you said. You said if everyone's steering in the right direction, I think that allows for more precision in terms of company objectives and company goals, fulfilling those goals. You come closer and closer to the target as you move around because you're still all steering in the same direction. That's good. Very good. Um, so why did you choose biomedical engineering as a field to major in at Georgia Tech? Why be med? Why did you choose it? Uh, initially, it was because I was pre-med. And because Georgia Tech had, you know, a great program, um, yeah. and I was interested in um, an engineering degree. Mm -hmm. I was interested in in learning, you know, um, I don't want to say more, but uh, being able to build things or understand, um, you know, from a first principles basis how things work. Um, so that was what I think initially encouraged me to look at BME. Um, but I think. You know my my rationale evolved over time um as you know i started to look outside of the scope of just pre-med um i fell in love with you know the problem-based learning environments uh i really enjoyed the uh collaborative environments given that you know most of the classes were team project based mm -hmm. and i was really um i think the the bme program more than anything else is one of the reasons that I pursued entrepreneurship. I mean, our program more than, you know, um, I think most others, even at Georgia Tech, uh, is very, you know, um, entrepreneurial focused. I think because the degree forces you to think about things in the context of um, the problems that clinicians, that patients, that whomever face, mm -hmm. and how you can address said problems. And that's a, um, framework that you can apply to anything it doesn't necessarily need to be within you know the medical device space or the healthcare space yeah, um, yeah i agree and, yeah i completely agree because i'm working on a startup as well and then within science education media media for science education so yeah so yeah oh heck yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and that startup is doing rather well so um my question to you is how do you how have you been resilient in covid during COVID-19, I think I would say, I hope we're nearing the end of this, mm -hmm. from what it seems um, globally, um, I hope we're nearing the end of this pandemic. How have you been resilient? Uh, or what complemented you being resilient? Hmm. So I, I think we didn't feel, or at least I personally didn't feel the effects of COVID as strongly, right. primarily because, um, you know, there were instances where you know where it was necessary for us to continue to go into like hospitals obviously with the proper safety precautions and such but you know we were necessary workers we we were creating you know a, a hardware product and that can't be done virtually so we had to uh, creatively think of ways in which we could continue operation while still ensuring that you know everything was safe and that you know, we were going above and beyond to make sure that we weren't putting anyone at, uh, you know, unnecessary risk. So for the most part, you know, after we had figured that out and put those pieces in place, operation kind of proceeded as, as normal. Sure, there yeah. were maybe some additional steps like, um, you know, the space in between all of us, barriers, uh, masks, you know, um, this, that, and the other. Mm. But we were still, um, at least after an initial lull, coming back into the office, we were still, um, you know, collaborating on the project as we, as we have been. Um, and even though some of the team was now more distributed, uh, since we have a pretty strong and pretty large software team, we're already pretty used to working with a distributor remote team anyway. Um, so okay. it, it kind of forced us to be more proactive in our processes and how we, um, you know, risk mitigated uh, our operations for the future, which yeah, I think yeah. was helpful. But in terms of, you know, like personal resiliency, I think one of the things that's been very difficult for a lot of people during COVID is not being able to see a lot of people. Um, and yeah. we as humans are very social, um, social creatures. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I don't think I personally felt that to uh, as great an extent as maybe some other people. Okay. Okay. Well, I appreciate you sharing that. So, um, if someone listens to this episode or when people listen to this episode and they see your career and they look at your profile on LinkedIn and just like, this dude's amazing. How can I be like him? So what would be your advice to those wanting to be like you or wanting to pursue the field that you are currently working in? 
What's your advice to them? Uh, for people that are interested in the field I'm in, um, I think a a passion for the field. Uh, you'll you'll notice a trend in some of my responses. Is yeah. is pretty important. I think that'll drive a lot of the work ethic. Um, and the decisions that you'll make that will be career defining. Uh, mm -hmm. So that, I think first and foremost, if it is something that you truly are passionate about, it's, it's something that you want to pursue, um, you empathize and believe in, uh, you know, creating devices, tools, services, what have you, that uh, help anyone uh, affected by healthcare um, or medicine, it, it's something that should come naturally. And and if it doesn't, that that's not to say that, Uh, it's not for you. There are definitely there are definitely a lot of different aspects of, you know, similar to what you were saying earlier. There are definitely a lot of different ways that people can create an impact. Um, so finding out what it is that you're passionate about or what drives you, I think, is um, going to be what allows you to set yourself apart from your peers. And I think in college that is uh, a large part of what you're what you're doing. You know, mm -hmm. it's not just uh, taking classes so that you can. Um, learn and retain content a lot of it is to better understand yourself and better understand what it is that you're passionate yeah. about and want to pursue in the future um so for anyone out there listening i mean figure out it doesn't matter really how old you are or whether you're in college before or after what have you um ask yourself what it is that gets you excited what uh what is it that you're passionate about and then um do whatever it is that uh lets you maintain that level of excitement uh yeah. career-wise personally what have you yeah self-discovery yeah that's very important dude you also know yourself to grow yourself and also to help with change so um what has been some of the most beneficial advice you have received Dev? like either from your parents your mentors what has been some of the most beneficial advice you received oh that's a good question huh what what replays in your mind on hard days Oh, when you have really exciting times, it kind of brings you back down to earth. <laughs> But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So one of the things that um, I think has been helpful is, um, uh, I don't remember who exactly told me or, or where I read this, but to be inflexible in your vision and what it is that you're trying to achieve long-term, but it's very flexible in how you get there. Um, Just because something isn't going as planned, or um, you you face some, you know, however you define a setback, this, that, the other, you know, you don't need to have a, you know, a, a set plan, a set of steps, things that have to go exactly right for you to get to where it is that you want to be. Yeah. Um, I don't personally, you know, believe in kind of a 10, 15, 20 year plan or anything to that extent. Mm -hmm. um, I. I I live in the moment for the most part, but I know right. the things that excite me are the things that um, I feel are going to make an impact. So in the context of, you know, for me personally, if my um, goal is to make an impact, I, I'm inflexible in that sense. I, I make decisions that um, lead me in that direction, but I'm pretty flexible in what I do day to day, you know, week to week, year to year, uh, as long as it's framed in the context of, you know, what it is I'm passionate about. Okay. That's good, Dad. That's very good. Amanda, thank you so much for joining me today. It was so good to have you on. Thanks for listening. We're glad you were able to tune into this podcast. Once again, this is The New Chemist, where we discuss chemistry, which simply put is the science of change, as well as the other sciences, careers, community, research, and COVID-19. Thanks again for listening. Note, the views on this podcast represent those of my guests and I. Thanks for listening. We're glad you were able to tune into this podcast. Once again, this is The New Chemist, where we discuss chemistry, which simply put is the science of change, as well as the other sciences, careers, community, research, and COVID-19. Thanks again for listening. Note, 
The views on this podcast represent those of my guests and I.